Um, finally, um, uh, let's hear from Sarah Jane at Lacuna Festival. Uh, welcome, Sarah Jane. Hi, thank you. Um, thank you for the invitation to speak today. Uh, my name is Sarah Jane Mason and I'm the co-director of Lacuna Festivals. Earlier on, Peter mentioned a festival with a team of two. That's us. Um, so that gives you like a little bit of an idea of how we operate. Um, it would be really helpful if I could get the slides up, please. Thank you so much. Um, so here are our sort of founding principles or ethics. Um, Lacuna Festivals are an annual, month-long, multidisciplinary um, festival. We've done five editions so far. Each edition has a has a theme, um, and we have a, a non hierarchical approach to the festivals um, in every sense. So, just to give an example of that, um, we have no judging panel. As long as if your artwork meets the theme, um, then you are in the festival. It's not um, a competition. It's about belonging. It's about taking part. It's about building a community and about building those connections. Um, we also aim to dismantle some barriers to participation. So we are totally anti-capitalist. We are non-commercial. Um, and that runs again throughout all of the strands of the festival. So there's no fee to submit your work. There's no fee to exhibit, to perform, to participate. There's no fee to come along to any of the exhibitions or performances. Um, and we use this as a way to dismantle some of those barriers and also to ensure that we can have more diverse participation. Um, next slide, please. Um, the festivals and the initiatives within the festivals are um, created as a way to hold space. That is how we see our role as facilitators. Um, and we have spaces that are online and face to face and also across distance. And what I mean by that is, um, for example, we had a, a project called the Travelling Sketchbook. And this was a, a physical sketchbook that got posted around the world. It went to about 18 different countries. Um, and so there was a different type of conversation happening there as to in a Zoom call as to around a table in a pub as to having a presentation in a gallery and um, so we try and provide lots of different platforms um, for people to access and um, we also say join the conversation and when we say that we mean join the conversation and your views will be listened to um, so it's very participant led um, an example of this is our theme. So every year the artists suggest themes for the following year and it's a totally democratic and public open vote. Um, and whatever gets the most votes is the next year's theme. Um, we don't shy away from difficult conversations. Um, we encourage all conversations around all sorts of different topics. Um, an example of this is providing a platform for a group of Ukrainian artists to discuss um, about Russian participation in cultural and arts events, um, which was quite a provocative conversation for a lot of the audience members. Um, as a facilitator, one of the things that um, I like to do is when people suggest events, because our events are all suggested by our participants, um, I go through and see if there are similar threads between participants and then I invite them to collaborate and work together. Um, this can build confidence for newer artists. It opens up more diverse conversations, but also it gives a sense of being a part of something a little bit bigger. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and this sense of being something, being part of something a little bit bigger um, is really important when it comes to creating community. We think that if you make a real connection, then you have a, you have a real community that gives a sense of belonging and identity. Um, and in fact, our artists were so keen to um, have a, an official identity as like a Lacuna Festival artist that um, they almost petitioned us for like two years to have merchandise. And we were like, oh no, it's, you know, we don't really want to do that. Um, but we, we have relented <laughs> because like we say, it's participant led. If that is what you want, then we will provide that within our framework. Um, so we have merchandise on a print to order basis. So it's sustainable, but also it's not for profit. So it's just whatever it costs the supplier to make is what people pay. Um, and this kind of idea of participants leading the festivals is developing with each edition. Um, so our last edition, which is the Metamorphosis poster here, 
Um, the, the branding, as we call it, for the year um, was a participant project that was um, created by one of our artists. Um, and so they came, Molly Goering, and they came up with this idea of everybody making making this gesture and sending it in and then came up with our um, poster idea. Um, the last point on community is that we have a publishing house and we use our publications as a way not only to archive what we do as a festivals, um, but to celebrate our artists and to provide something tangible for them to take out and share with their wider community. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and one of the key points about having this community is um, our artists feedback that these connections and this community makes the space feel safe and inclusive and accessible um, and so that provides a comfortable space to explore their creative practice and to create new work so that means that they are uh, more open to experimenting and investigating um, and an example here on the left hand side of the screen these are examples from our collaboration project which we run every year artists submit um, a half finished piece of work it can be in any media any material um, we have performing arts musicians spoken word pieces we've had raps we've had all sorts of stuff we have um, a funky spreadsheet we put everybody's work in um, and we then at random pair people up so you get a new piece of work back to finish you've never met that artist you've never had a conversation with that artist and yet again you're having this conversation and this collaboration and making this connection actually through creative practice um on the right hand side this was a project led by theatre company to nanny nanny in 2020 um, and it brought together 15 um artists from around the world to create um it's about 45 minutes piece um called hero the dream of a working class man you can still see this on our YouTube channel. Um, but I wanted to draw attention to this because these artists um, are working together still now, four or five years later. So having that real connection means that there are lasting changes to practice for our participants. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Katinka mentioned ecosystems earlier and we see Lacuna Festivals as being nested within lots of other ecosystems um, and the importance of that for us is about sharing knowledge and experience and skills and understanding, about learning from cross-sector exchange um, but also from coming from a place of generosity, um, so dismantling information keeping as a way to tackle privilege. Um, and there's an example here of um, the EFFA network, which was um, actually an academically based um, network. And um, you can see the seminar titles here. There's a recently published book called Listening Without Borders. Um, I highly recommend it. There's a little 50% off code there. But it's just really interesting because this is a, a book that asks questions about how we can encounter difference, how we can engage with other people. Um, basically, but from loads of different perspectives, academics, artists, activists, etc. Um, it's a super, super interesting text. Um, and finally, a little bit about the future. Um, so on to the next slide, please. Um, the, the future for us is really meeting people where they are, which has always been our basis for participation. Um, but we want to link this into ideas of sustainability, um, and into notions of care, how we welcome each other. Um, when Hannah was talking about access riders and accessibility, this is part of our plan. So we are going to be asking about people's um, specific adjustments and requirements just as a matter of course. Um, good accessibility means, you know, great things for everybody, not just for those with, who have disabilities or who have specific access needs. Um, and uh, yeah, communication is where action begins. So having like a, a clear and transparent communication process and keeping that conversation open as a way of making sure that the process stays open. It's not like, oh, we've done that, check. It's like a, an ongoing process of um, improvement and renewal. Um, thank you so much for your time.